Hello and welcome to webinar series hosted by Happiest Health. Happiest Health is a global knowledge platform for health and wellness. I am Kumarin and I will be your host for today's session on how allergies and winter have a tight-knit connection. While winters can be cozy and blissful for some, the experience can be quite the opposite for others. Experts say that symptoms like runny nose, sneezing and cough during winter are often attributed to the drop in temperatures. However, they can occur due to allergies as well. People usually tend to, say, uh, tend to stay indoors during winter. As a result, the risk of exposure to certain allergens increases. The common allergens include dust mites, pet dander and mold, which can contribute to allergic reactions. To dwell deep into this subject, we have with us two eminent panel members who treat individuals with allergies day in and day out. We have with us Dr. Sujata Ramesh, Consultant Pediatric Allergy and Immunology, Manipal Hospitals, Bangalore. Dr. Sujata Ramesh served as a Clinical Associate Professor of Pediatrics at the University at Buffalo in the Division of Allergy and Immunology. She's a diplomat of the American Board of Allergy and Immunology and a fellow of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology. Her clinical experience includes managing asthma, food allergies, allergic rhinitis and other allergic disorders in infants, children, adolescents. She is an internationally recognized pediatric allergy specialist. In order to giving over a hundred invited lectures, she has several publications in peer reviewed journals. Her research interests include the prevention and management of food allergies and the impact of urbanization and lifestyle changes on the development of allergic diseases. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Kumaran. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, next, we have with us Dr. Somnath Gupta, internal medicine specialist, Yashoda Hospital, Hyderabad. Dr. K. Somnath Gupta is a senior consultant physician and diabetology at Yashoda Hospitals. With over 15 years of experience, he specializes in the treatment on management of general medicine disorders, diabetes, infectious diseases, allergy and immunological disorders and rheumatological disorders, disorders among others. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for your great. Thank you. Uh, before the both panelists start talking about the entire allergy and the uh, how it has a tight-knit connection between winters, uh, let me first start by asking Dr. Sujata Ramesh, uh, ma'am, what is the link between allergies and winter? Uh, winter is supposed to be, as I said, uh, very nice, cold and um, beautiful season, but how, what is it to do with allergies? Very apt question for this time of the year i almost yeah. didn't make it here okay. because the outpatient was so crowded with you know very pressing needs of patients who are having a lot of allergies and their allergies okay. acting up with uh, okay. we have to first understand what do we mean by allergies because uh, allergies mean different things to different patients so for the most part it's the nasal symptoms which are very predominant and bothersome uh, with the runny nose, stuffy nose, as you said, and the sneezing yeah. and nasal congestion, sinus headaches, and so on, which yeah. are really cardinal symptoms of allergy, really, often treated you know, with antibiotics and not addressed quite appropriately. We also have a lot of wheezing and cough and asthma. And there's a link between the upper and the lower airway, you know, sometimes each independent or both together. So okay. this is what mainly we see a lot exacerbated during winter. Okay, And uh, one of the reasons is um, perhaps during winter, you have a lot of viral infections, which kind of triggers an already inflamed airway. So adding insult to injury. Okay. So they tend to have a lot of exacerbations. In fact, this morning, I had a patient who came and said that they were doing fine up until, you know, maybe they may have had a cold a couple of weeks back and now the allergies are acting up with a lot of runny nose and wheezing and the patient was in quite a bit of distress. So one of the things is, yes, your allergies, maybe you're staying more indoors. You know, that's one thing exposed to the indoor allergens. Also, you know, a, a lot of times um, before the actual chill and the frost sets in, there's a period of time when, you know, post rain and the nice sunshine after the monsoons, you do see a lot of grass pollens and weed pollens. So yes, the outdoor allergens and the indoor allergens, along with you know, changes in the temperature, humidity, but more so because of the viral infections which are triggering this. Sure, ma'am. Um, 
to moving on to dr uh, somnath does the winter season make allergies even more worse doctor yeah it's absolutely winter is one of the uh, good season to experience a uh, lot of uh, i mean to say we feel chilled we feel comfortable we but there are few issues in terms of skin related as well as respiratory symptoms which can get worsened in winters so like winter is a, a season where it, there's a lot of dry air low humid environment and this can cause a lot of skin irritation which can uh, trigger our skin diseases existing skin diseases like eczema these can get exacerbated similarly okay. winter is a season where we have uh, experience to stay indoors and this indoors can trigger our indoor allergens like uh, pets pet dander a lot of dust mites as well as molds which can cause and similarly indoor staying can trigger like it can be a, like a poor ventilatory environment which can cause respiratory issues some skin allergens allergic reactions and in winters we the temperature is low because of which we open our heating systems different heating systems and as we are not uh, like using that heating system for few months these heating systems can also uh, because of settling heating system for few months this ducts may be occupied with allergens and we exposed to these allergens and uh, we don't maintain those air filters or those heating systems and that can trigger allergens similarly winters as there is a very low temperature during winters so because of this there is a lot of pollen growth as well as a lot of mold growth which can a lot of people be exposed to those molds as well as pollens can also trigger this uh, respiratory infections as well as skin related allergens okay. and if it, when there's low temperature the viruses can sustain and grow during these winters and it can cause respiratory tract infections and a person who is allergic or allergic airway disease that can also trigger because of these infections and these symptoms can persist to weeks to months mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay okay uh, on 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 the point that you had said that these can cause for weeks to months but there's something there are some common allergens seen in winter to to coming to dr sujatha ma'am uh, what are the common allergens ma'am uh, seen in the winter and does the temperature play a role in this see actually the number one culprit i would say if i were to prick one best or one worst rather in this situation huh? Huh? would be dust mite okay. okay because this is something you know more than about i would say 80 to 90% of the patients the number one allergen and the most common allergen in india would be dust mite okay and okay. Uh, you know it depends on which part of the country but pretty much if you were to go you know north delhi etc you're pretty much indoors you are using woolens you're using blankets you're using quilts where they tend to stay in mattresses upholstered yeah. furniture and wool woolen you know they feed on the dry scales yeah. that drop off and they thrive they also thrive in a more humid environment so i don't know if people are using the humidifiers indoors mm -hmm. but uh, definitely you're exposed a lot to them when you're indoors okay so oh. that's, uh, one reason that you would see a lot of uh, exposure to dust mite in fact the patient i was telling you this morning oh yeah so she told me that her eyes are itching so terribly that she feels like gouging her eyes out Okay. And uh, I asked her about nasal stuffiness and congestion, you know, wasn't very predominant. And cough not much. So when I looked at her I said, "No, you must be having nasal allergies." You know, the nasal internal was swollen, she had fluid in her ears. And then she told me after a lot of questioning, she told me that yes, and once in a way I I carry my inhaler with me all the time. So she uses the, you know, emergency inhaler. She's training to be a pilot. She's so nervous about disclosing any kind of illness for fear of you know uh, having repercussions on her career mm. so i carry my inhaler with me so how often are you using it every month so what's oh. going on she said why why am i having these eye itching it's not the outdoor pollen and she said i've been staying indoors more so oh. right it now and actually it's because you know you're exposed to the pillow and the mattress and you're lying down you're indoors and the couch so she's rubbing her face and her eyes right into this which may be loaded with dust mites okay so just to give you an example of you know being indoors and in this time of the year and the exacerbation the allergen so number one would probably be dust mite and indeed her skin test did show that she was very 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 allergic to dust mite oh great great okay um, so the temperature also and, plays and, a role and then, and to just step back a little bit yeah. indoors mold mold is another thing that you may uh -huh. be exposed to and you know usually if there's lots of cracks and leaks 
um, you know, especially under the sinks and the bathroom areas. And sometimes post rain, if there's okay. water damage and you see the blackness, you know, sometimes you yep. see that, especially in Mumbai and cities like that, where they have a lot of water damage. So that tends to suggest that there is mold. Okay. So mold spore is also quite ubiquitous indoors. And, you know, not necessarily indoors, the outdoors can be indoors. So we tend to open the windows up, you know, get the nice fresh air in, especially early mornings. Right. So you see a lot of these weed pollens, which we call these tiny, tiny weeds, like the Parthenium, but much smaller, like the Amaranth species and the grass pollens, because sometimes when it's warm and sunny and not too chill yet, you do have a preponderance of these kind of pollens, which are outdoors okay. in the air, but they tend to come indoors also when you open out everything. Okay, right, right. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, Dr. Gupta, so what are the some key differences between cold and an allergy? I think this is something that has been interchangeably sometimes used in during this season. So uh, what do you think? Very odd question. Like uh, being this season, winter season, a lot of people come to me that they say that I have a very low immunity because of which I have been uh, recurrently having these respiratory symptoms like cough, cold, sore throat, running nose. But actually there's a there's a big difference between these recurrent infections or recurrent respiratory symptoms. So when we say this recurrent respiratory symptom, like a person with recurrent respiratory symptoms, we need to differentiate whether he is having a recurrent common cold or whether he is having an allergic airway disease. So there's a lot of contradictory difference between these two poles. These two things are extremely different. These two are completely different two poles. So when we say about allergic airway disease like allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, bronchitis or allergic airway disease and asthma, these are the different things which we see when our localized gut, uh, respiratory related immunity increases increases like isnophils and Ig levels when it gets increased they expose to that known uh, I might say allergen which we they say that they get sensitized and they experience these kind of symptoms like cough cold sore throat running nose and some breathlessness and wheezing too but in when we say about common cold they too have these symptoms but the differentiating symptoms to them is they have infective symptoms also mixed with this like fever body pains headache bitter taste, loss of appetite, weakness, tiredness, fatigue with these symptoms. So when a person comes with uh, respiratory symptoms, we should differentiate. It's main, uh, the treatment completely differs as well as the prognosis also differs. So we need to count, we need to see what exactly is this, whether they have allergic airway disease or infection, like okay. common cold, like you know, rhinovirus, respiratory, Coxsackie, recently COVID, all these are respiratory tract infections where the treatment completely differs. So because of low immunity, these respiratory tract infections can occur and it can progress and worsen to a stage that it can convert into a pneumonia also and can okay. go to a very extreme stage. But whereas uh, this allergic airway disease, these symptoms will be slowly progressive and mm -hmm. it can also go to a very fatal stage, but in only few. Whereas the symptoms will be chronic. It will be like on and off. They, for okay. few days, expect the symptoms that goes away and uh, it can recur back when they expose to allergen back. So we should, the differentiation is most important in terms of treatment and prognosis. So mm -hmm. if we start giving antibiotics to all the allergic airway disease patients, it doesn't help you in any way. For, a, for uh, If there is a coincidence of allergic with infection, definitely that will help. But giving antibiotics to all the patients, not judiciously seeing what whether those antibiotics are required doesn't help you in any way. Similarly, if you are giving, uh, like if the patient experience infect you and you are giving anti-allergic measures to them, that doesn't help you. It can worsen the infection too. So we should right. think about before treating what exactly what you're treating and okay. we should clearly define it so that it can help in preventing the future attacks also. Exactly, exactly. Correct. So when, when you say that to the point, uh, so I would like to ask Dr. Uh, Sujata about, so ma'am, uh, so when it, Treatment is becoming difficult. So what are the some typical signs and symptoms of winter allergy? So where someone can actually differentiate that, yes, this is a winter allergy. Actually, you know, it, it is constant colds, frequent colds, one cold running to the other, colds not just going away. And uh, some patients, you know, it seems, I'll put it in very simple layman's terms. Okay. If the cold tends to settle in the chest, because they okay. perceive the wheezing and the asthma as congestion, chest congestion. So you ask them if they have frequent chest congestion. The other important thing also, especially if you talk about lower airway and asthma, would be if 
it gets worse when they're running or playing or running up the stairs. So exercise and also a lot of cough at night because at night your lung functions tend to go down. So if it is inflamed and you're having an asthma attack, you tend to have more cough at night. So I would say cough, nasal symptoms would be predominant in terms of the nasal and respiratory allergies. It's just persistence of symptoms. Okay. And it doesn't respond to things like antibiotics, you know, recurrent courses that they go to their physicians for. What it would respond to probably would be if it's the nasal symptoms, the topical nasal spray. So ask them if they've used nas nose sprays and sometimes the antihistamine does give a little bit of relief. Mm -hmm. But if it's lower airway and the asthma, it would have to be a bronchodilator, something to relieve the spasm of the lungs. Okay. So okay. response to a particular kind of treatment also or lack of response to conventional treatment. These are important clues which guide us. Right, right. Okay. Uh, on, on the same signs sign and symptoms, uh, uh, Sutata has told, Dr. Gupta, so how do you get relief from these symptoms? Uh, these are symptoms that you were also mentioned about earlier. So re relief uh, from the uh, First, first, we need to know, like, if a person has this recurrent respiratory symptoms, so how frequently he gets it, whether he is, winter is prone to get these recurrent respiratory, inf uh, respiratory symptoms, then if at all the symptoms are limited to nasal, like just nasal congestion, sneezing, running nose, or he had a post-nasal drip, or in few, they will be experiencing chronic cough, like they'll be presenting with the cough two weeks to months together. In few, they may go further down and can present with breathlessness and wheezing. So, what exactly the symptom, whether he's having just rhinitis or rhinocytis with sinusitis or with the bronchitis or with allergic diabetes or uh, I mean, the asthma and mix of all those things. So, we need to know exactly what he is having facing the symptoms. And we should first treat the symptoms like, for example, he has rhinitis, is having only nasal congestion, sneezing, running nose or a post-nasal trip. We can just use some topical nasal uh, drops or a nasal spray, which can will be antihistamines in few mixed with the stress which will help in improving the symptoms. In bronchitis, the patient may require some nebulizations with this same antihistamines, a kind of uh, bronchodilators with a beta 2 agonist and some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, steroids also. Uh, so depending on the how severe the symptoms are, the treatment varies. Similarly, when the patient is relieved with the symptoms, we need to educate, we need to we need to find out the allergen which is allergic. He may be allergic to pollen, he may be allergic to molds, he may be allergic to both mixed. He may be allergic to some kind of woolen clothes or he may be allergic to cold environment that does settling in. So any of these things may be allergic. So he may be allergic to all of those things. We need to identify which he is allergic and we need to counsel him regarding how he need to maintain or how he need to prevent these kind of exposed to allergens so that he can uh, avoid or prevent his future attacks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, while we take the last uh, questions to both the doctors, we have a lot of questions also pouring in from the audience, um, I, which I will take it a uh, little later after this question. Um, in case if anyone has uh, any doubts, queries, anything, please put on the chat box in the question. So I will take it to address it to our doctors. Uh, Dr. Sujata, uh, so when, we, when it, we have talked about what causes allergens and the relief met methods, are allergies passed on to generate? I mean, it is genetic. Yeah, very good question. Because uh, the allergic tendency, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have the exact genes, we would love to. But uh, the tendency to develop allergies, it runs in families. So one of the commonest questions we ask after symptoms, anybody in the family with asthma, allergies or frequent colds or, you know, uh, wheezing and so on. Okay. And we invariably do have a history of a family history of this. So the predisposition oh. definitely does exist. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, ma so so basically, uh, the one of this question was again asked by another parent. Um, so if I have, will my child take it, pick it up? Or how is it? Actually, there's a high likelihood of inheritance. Oh. Okay. Um, how severe it's going to be, it's difficult to predict, especially if both parents have it, then there's a higher likelihood. Okay. Of the child have it. So, yes, uh, there is a strong uh, tendency to inherit it. Okay. If not in the immediate family, it will be in cousins or it will be in the grandparents or somewhere. Okay. You will definitely get a history of this. 
Okay, okay, sure. In fact, if, in fact, going back, putting it in a different perspective, okay. if somebody comes with frequent colds, a child comes with frequent colds, and you know, you think is this allergy, then one of the criteria for considering it, swaying it towards allergy versus infection or just a common cold would be family history. A family oh. history of asthma indicates that we have to treat this, consider this as allergy, asthma, so on, and okay. treat. In fact, atopy, we use the term atopy. Atopy is a tendency to develop allergic disease. Okay. So we okay. ask for this atopic history, which is kind of pretty broad based. It may not necessarily be nasal. It could be nasal symptoms. It could be wheezing. It could be eczema, you know, the no. atopic dermatitis, etc. So you have to ask a broad based question. And it's very important that, yes, the tendency runs in families, definitely. It's definitely. Okay. Right, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Gupta, so what are the precautions one can take to protect themselves from um, allergies during winter and also the relief symptoms? Um, again, if you can sum it up uh, for the audience for that matter, as a closing term. Okay, as I said earlier, uh, like treatment is important, but these allergies uh, usually can recur back again. So prevention is more important than the treatment to avoid future attacks. So prevention is like mainly as we discussed, these winters trigger these uh, allergic airway diseases. So expo exposed to the cold weather should be limited and uh, we should cover up ourselves using masks or a kind of uh, devices which can help in avoiding the cold weather exposures. Similarly, keeping our environment warm. Uh, like as I said prior, when there's a poor ventilation, these, can, these allergic reactions as well as respiratory issues can trigger. So uh, ventilation should be good enough. Sim and similarly, the temperature which we expose, low degree temperature should be minimized. Uh, okay. Keeping the heaters are good enough to help in improving, but heaters should be first before using that. We should properly, uh, I mean to say, we should properly help in uh, the heaters when we use it. Uh, we use it only during winter months, so it will be occupied with a lot of dust. So we yeah. should use it properly before clean. Uh, I mean, say clean it properly. Use a lot of. Uh, uh, you can uh, help in maintenance. Regular maintenance of these heaters will also help in decreasing these allergens. And similarly, a lot of people uh, think about this, uh, I mean to say pollens as well as molds can also help in impacting or cause in impacting these kind of allergic airway diseases. So exposed to molds and pollen should be limited. We should be like covering ourselves completely during these winter months and uh, using humidifiers, which can also help in maintaining humidity levels and also help in preventing these dry skins, which can decrease this allergic skin related reactions and the proper ventilation as well as minimizing this exposures to pollen and, and mold, which can also help in preventing uh, or triggering this or help in avoiding this recurrent allergic airway diseases. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, I just wanted to um, again conclude uh, with Dr. Sujata. Uh, Ma'am, is there anything else that you want to uh, sum it up with or maybe if you could present it? Uh, in, is there something that, uh, apart from what we've discussed, uh, so we can go ahead with that? It's a lot more complex now in terms of prevention and intervention. Because not only do you have allergens, you have changes in the pollens, which are you know meaner pollens. It's also a lot of lifestyle changes, the indoor living, the pollution and so on. So we need to kind of look into these and focus a lot on prevention, intervention, prevention, primary prevention, you know, treatment appropriate, definitely yes. But primary prevention and further intervention can be just completely, you know, have healthy people with no allergies. I think that's where I want to kind of leave you with. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for summing it up. Uh, one question that uh, we have, we'll take it for, for you, each of you. Uh, ma'am, again, I'll, I'll come with, come to you with this question. Um, so there's an anonymous attendee who has uh, sent us a question saying that, could my pet's hair in my bedding and pillows cause a stuffy nose every day? Okay. That's the I, I empathize with whoever's asked this question. It's a very, very, very difficult situation because a pet is like a child. Okay, so it's very difficult. But certainly if it's a, a pet, the pet dander, it's not the hair, but the dander, the dry scales. Okay, so definitely, yes, if you have a pet indoors and you, you know, obviously love your pet and spending a lot of time 
inhaling a lot of the dander yes it certainly could lead to daily symptoms more so cats are more sensitizing than dog so i would suggest that you have to check with an allergist get tested and find out yes or no for sure right if it's no then fine if it's yes then obviously we have to look into some remedial measures but okay. my empathy is with you and i think you should get tested it's important yeah so the next question is exactly about that uh, to dr somna um, uh, dr so what are the tests that's available and how can one get tested and uh, be away from the allergies so definitely there are few tests which are available to know whether uh, you have allergic airway disease like uh, you know have any say allergic airway disease uh, eosinophils are the main cells which can trigger allergy uh, or which can trigger this symptom so we can have an absolute eosinophil count as well as one immunoglobulin ige levels which can monitor similarly there are allergic panel tests to the inhalational allergens as well as food related allergens which can test but it's not that there are millions of allergens surrounding us we can't test all the millions of allergens we can just test the common allergens surrounding us in the food air in the air we can test about 100 to 500 allergens but not more than that definitely and it is not definite that uh, if you found few allergens in this allergic you are only allergic to those allergens there may be n number of allergens surrounding us which we can't able to test also so basically if we can find only the common uh, uh, allergens surrounding us like as we discussed earlier dust mites fungus as well as some kind of uh, uh, woolen clothes cockroaches uh, 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 and you can see some foods like uh, no, non vegetarian as well as uh, some sea foods uh, and you can have some these are the common things like peanuts these we can test these few things we can't test all the allergens like millions of allergens surrounding us okay. so basically when we say ig levels and eosinophils are elevated there are chance of allergic and by uh, trial and error we need to find out what we are allergic and okay. that is the best method okay thank you thank you so much um Thank you so much, Dr. Sujata Ramesh. Thank you so much, Dr. Somnath K. Gupta, for giving us an entire overview of uh, allergies, causes, symptoms, and precaution methods, um, and for taking questions from the audience as well. Thank you so much for your inputs. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Thank you Doctor. Thank you Thank so you. much.